Well, this bit of raw footage needed to be cut apart a few different ways. Even if I fast-forwarded for the entire bit of raw footage, we'd go around 31 minutes before I get to the next save. And of course, there's going to be reasons for us to slow down the footage for parts of it. There's no way we're going to be going through entirely familiar territory for that damn long. So, we've got some possessed pirates here. Not really worth slowing things down for, but still kind of interesting. Well, at least shooting containers with the beams works as the tutorial said they would. Still an annoying way to deal with ammo for a pair of guns like this. And based on the, the uh, bars on the right side of the screen, we're going to unlock the ability to hold more ammo for them as we keep going on. Please tell me ammo for these things isn't going to be enhanced with things similar to the missile upgrades. Ugh, I can accept that from missiles since that's been a thing since absolutely every Metroid game, but not a pair of beams that aren't going to show up in any other game. More pirates! Part of me is tempted to check if they're possessed or not, but it's not like they act any different either way. And again, I ignore the yellow door there that we've been able to open for quite a while now. I'm pretty sure I wasn't this stupid when we went through the first Metroid Prime. I suppose this is new territory, since there's an energy tank we've never seen before. Not really sure why I decided not to slow the footage down at the moment, though. Either I didn't pay all that much attention when I was setting the footage up for later commentary, or I just didn't actually gain anything in this path. Well... That door certainly isn't a dark beam door. Right, so we need some kind of multi-missile thing, and since I somehow doubt that we're going to uh, be able to get the energy tank, we should just move on. Okay. So apparently I wanted to try to get the energy tank at least so this trip into this room didn't feel like a waste. Which itself wasted more time. Definitely feeling like an idiot in this LP. All those other Metroid games and I feel like I have nowhere near the attention to detail that I showed in the other games we went through for some reason. Even the other 3D Metroid title we have already gone through. Why do I have the distinct feeling that when we're done with this one, I'm going to delay getting to Metroid Prime 3 simply because I want to cry in shame at my performance in Metroid Prime 2? I'm not sure who's more trusting, Samus or myself. I certainly didn't know where that cannon would launch us when we got into it. At most, I was expecting to end up on that platform, not past it by flying right through that odd hand in the middle of nowhere. Another door that we're incapable of opening at the moment. 
At least that sort of thing makes me feel less guilty for not exploring as well as I probably should have. It's a pretty familiar feeling to come across roadblock after roadblock in this series, but still... Yeah. Anyway, let's try to remember what we're here for. The temple needs the energy we gathered. Really wish I felt especially interested in restoring the energy and saving this world that we only just got introduced to. Eh, uh, hell. I typically feel more invested saving worlds in Final Fantasy games than this, so it's not that the overall plot is bad. There's just something about the execution that has me oddly apathetic. And apparently, just like when we grabbed the energy in the Dark World, there's no interaction on our part required. Just walk close enough and Samus deals with it on her own. Well, now that we've lit a miniature sun, time to come back to the main temple. I'm sure Exposition Guy has something more to say to us now. I don't suppose that was enough to let the distress call go through, was it? Not that I'm ever expecting us to get any help out here. Just that I'd like some sense of what we did other than generic, here's the energy, things are good. Why did that hologram come back? So, the digital ghost of a guy we didn't actually meet is bowing to our accomplishment here. I'm sure that was supposed to help add some effect to our actions, but frankly, I can think of a better way to pull off uh, a sense of accomplishment here. Specifically, when we killed the plant boss near the mirrors in the first Metroid Prime, the acid all over the place was replaced by water. Seriously, give us some visual sign other than lights that we've made this planet just a little more livable. I'm not asking for something like grass and flowers immediately starting to grow when we get to one of these temples. This isn't to that kind of franchise. Though, come to think of it, this game really feels like they were trying to shift Metroid in the direction of Legend of Zelda at the time. Hell, the Dark World thing mirrors Twilight Princess which was made in the same console generation. Dark Link is an occasionally recurring foe, that sort of thing. Eh, that said, it'll probably take me quite a while to get around to LPing the uh, Legend of Zelda series. The only games I ever played to completion when I was growing up were Twilight Princess, uh, and actually no others. The only other one I've ever played to completion is Breath of the Wild. And while amusing, neither really drew me in the way other people were drawn in. It's pretty odd, really, because I remember being absolutely enraptured by Okami, and that was, in a way, a Legend of Zelda ripoff with its own, uh, bit of artistic style. I wish I knew why I was pretty sucked into the gameplay and story of Okami, but other adventure games of that style I have to kind of force myself through. Right. Not far from the main temple location here. Again, you'd think the enemy would do more to prevent us from uh, getting to the temple, since there's only one way for us to get there from the other temple. Hell, some of the earlier bosses felt pretty scary to me. But maybe that's just uh, me for trying to shift my expectations for a war-style thing, instead of the usual exploration we generally get with Metroid. It's not like the pirates really redistributed their troops as we kept pushing forward in Zero Mission or Super Metroid. And it's not like I complained about how 
Raven Beak handled things all that much in Metroid Dread, or the X handled things in uh, Fusion. So I can't really help feeling that I'm being a little bit unfair to this game. Right, next elevator. Kind of wish I had more to say, and that's one of the reasons I've been fast-forwarding like hell at the moment. We are doing some rather empty backtracking here. It is literally just for the sake of us learning where we need to go next. The light is shining into the other light there. Progress has been made. We already got a bit of thanks by seeing that ghost hologram bow to us for some reason. If anything, I was expecting them to try intercepting us before we managed to transfer the energy to the right temple after we killed that Worm Hydra thing. And just what counts for unusual activity when the entire world had a temporal storm as we were flying in in the first place? Seriously. I don't have much, if any, frame of reference for what counts as normal and odd around here. I suppose that's as good of uh, marching orders as we're gonna get here. So, we were transporting more energy than our scanners were able to register. I'm sure Samus is planning on getting a better scanner at the first opportunity. Well, at least now I seem to realize that I have the ability to go through things with the orange-yellowish uh, glyph on them. At least I think glyph is the right term for those holographic geometric shapes. Why is it I didn't know the instant that hologram outright told us we could open doors and read lore with that shape, but now that I know just after not being told? Ugh. Again, I'm kind of feeling like an idiot here. Well, that's a familiar creature. Assuming creature is the right word to use when talking about a floating ball of energy that keeps dropping bombs. So in the previous Metroid Prime, we needed an electrical gun to be able to damage the things. But here, literally anything will do. Again, bit of an odd decision with this game. I get that they wanted to use a previously made asset, but come on. Well, let's see if the swamp is going to be more visually interesting than the desert. Part of me doubts it, but I wouldn't mind being wrong. So, we at least need to go through part of that central sector we landed in before we actually get to the new area we're supposed to get to. Eh. <sighs> More padding. Really? 
really wish I felt that taking these enemies down felt more satisfying. I'm not sure how much of that is due to the fact that we're looking at the footage long after I recorded it, or if I had the same lack of concern taking enemies down when actually playing the game that I do right now as I'm trying to come up with commentary. Ugh. As a side note, it sounds like the game slows down a bit when I look at the map. Odd. You'd think that looking at the map would need less processing power than looking at our surroundings, especially if we are in combat at the time. Ah well, I most definitely got a more powerful PC before recording Metroid Prime 3, so no worries on that front. Again, probably a bit premature to start thinking about Pri Metroid Prime 3 when we're still in the second game. You mean to tell me we're gonna have to go through a bloody portal in order to get past a door? Ugh, the game designers for this one certainly went out of their way to slow things down in quite a few different ways, didn't they? Right, back in the dark world, and what a surprise, the door in front of us doesn't have a super missile door anymore. The one behind us does. Well, at least these little bastards that shift around on the walls manage to do a decent amount of damage to us. I still don't feel threatened by them, but I'll take what I can get. And that's practically asking for us to get absolutely slaughtered later on. Still, since part of the problem here is I'm feeling complacent with the fighting when this is one of the more difficult Metroid games, I think I'm allowed to ask for the smackdown. It's easier to get excited dealing with that kind of problem instead of just where do you go and how. Apparently, we get nothing for how we destroy that kind of organic wall. We're supposed to just run through the poison gas that somehow tries to make the already toxic air more dangerous. Ah, I was wondering when the wall laser eye things would return. Those were pretty early game hostiles in the first Metroid Prime. Is there a reason it took until now for us to start dealing with them? And we got to the other side without having to worry about losing one of our energy tanks. The new armor is certainly getting plenty of exercise, but unfortunately, I still feel this armor is underwhelming, even if it's obvious to see how it makes things easier for us here. So, we need to arrange for some things in this tram uh, to move here. Okay. Considering how far along into this footage we are right now, a good stopping point is probably going to be when, when that tram gets to wherever its end destination is. I just wish it felt like uh, we were actually accomplishing a decent amount in this clip. Sure, getting the light into the temple and talking to you, Moss, was necessary, but it didn't really give me a sense that we've uh, made major progress here. Son of a bitch. Still one lock to put into place. Sorry about that. I once again feel like a bit of an idiot. How the hell did I miss that one the first time around? It's not like it was hidden in any way. Ah well, the tram's ready for us. Not much point in scanning that thing there, but hey, it was scannable and it's not like we're in a hurry here. A 
left behind and the enemy never bothered to destroy it. I'm sure that there's an excuse for all the energy crystals uh, as well, since the enemy has every reason to remove them. Yeah. Again, Dark Samus proved that they could be destroyed back in the first clip of the game when we lost our starting equipment. And it's not like this stuff is benefiting the Eng in any way. Right, guess we're coming through another portal soon. <laughs>